All right, shalom to all the viewers out there that have been following along in this Bible Unlocked series. Um, I want to say peace and blessings, and hopefully the Most High has moved your spirit and, um, and opened your mind. Um, but without further ado, what we're going to uh, touch on today is a continuation of the stumbling blocks from the last uh, video called The Trap of Paul's Epistles. I told you I would go into some more of these stumbling blocks that are in Paul's letters that the Most High purposely put in there for a, as a, to use as a dividing factor to those that have a pure heart and those that really have a wicked heart and just going to use the Bible to mask their wickedness. Um, the Most High put had Paul put a spirit on Paul to write in such a manner that would trap people. So that one of the uh, stumbling blocks is the subject of unclean foods. Pork, shrimp, crab, lobster. Many people think that these things have been, the, uh, that the laws of these things have been done away. Since Paul came on the scene, they think that somehow they're just done away. Or you got many people that think that uh, not eating pork is a Muslim uh, doctrine. That's something that pertains to the Muslims when that is not true at all. The Muslims got that concept from the Bible. So that's what we're going to touch on today. And we're going to, I'm going to show you the stumbling block that the most high put out there that, and this is something that many people are going to fall into, believe it or not. And it's going to send people, a lot of people to the lake of fire. Many people are going to fall into this stumbling block that the most high put out there. Why? Because of their own heart. So this is, we're going to go into the scripture that Christians use to justify being able to eat whatever they want and not have to be, uh, 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 have any obe obedience to the most high's law. I'm brother Yerushalayim. This is the Bible unlocked the pork deception. Second Peter three, verse 15, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. What is uh, Peter telling you? I always like to start off when dealing with uh, doctrine coming from the brother Paul with the disclaimer that Peter gave to everyone out there through the spirit of the most high, the disclaimer that he gave about the brother Paul. He's saying that there's things that are hard to be understood in all his epistles, not just Romans, Galatians, all of the epistles that uh, the apostle Paul wrote. There's things in there that are difficult to be understood and they that are unlearned don't have any idea about the law, statutes, and commandments, the Old Testament. They don't have any idea about that. They wrestle with these scriptures to their own destruction. That's what Peter's telling you. You're not going to be able to pull Paul up next to you during, in the time of judgment and say, well, Paul, why did you tell me? Or why did you write it this way? Peter's telling you, you're going to have to pay the penalty for accepting things that you think Paul is saying and creating doctrine over them and creating doctrine out of these things. You're gonna to have to pay the penalty. So this uh, subject of eating pork, shrimp, lobster, and you don't have to keep none of the dietary laws that saying that Paul said that's done away with, you're gonna to have to pay for that after finishing watching this video. I'm gonna show you exactly what Paul is saying. And if you still choose to accept that, then that's you and that's your judgment that you have to deal with with the most high. 1 Timothy 4 verse 4, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. See, this is one thing about the Israelites. We don't run from those scriptures. We're going to pull out the scriptures that you and the Christian church all use as doctrine. We're going to run to those first and we're going to show you how it's being misinterpreted. So we're not running to, we ain't running from no scriptures. We're running right to the scriptures. So in this one, Paul says, every creature is good. This is the Christian. This is what they do. They say every creature, then they run with it. And see, see, brother Paul is saying we can eat anything we want. And there's nothing to be refused at all. 
We don't have to keep none of the dietary laws, nothing. Paul is telling me, brother, that anything out there that I want to put my hands on and put my lips on is good. I can eat anything I want. So what I'm going to say is, okay, I'm going to hold you to that right now. Since Paul, since you're taking this literally and saying Paul said every single thing you want to put your hands on is good. So I'm going to hold you to that right now and we're going to move on to another verse and I'm going to still ask you the same question. If Paul is saying every single creature in the world is good or is he just or is he talking about a specific type of creature that's good and, and, and nothing to be refused. Watch. Revelations 5 verse 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. So what is, what is John letting you know here? He's letting you know that humans are included in the list of creatures. He heard men, these are men that are saying this. He called the men creatures. So humans are included in the list of creatures. Paul said, every creature is good and nothing to be refused. My question is, is Paul now giving you the authority to go out and eat humans and to be a cannibal? Is that what Paul is telling you? Is he saying now, don't, you don't have to listen to no law. Now you're able to eat humans and anything else you want to eat because humans are part of a creature. He never said every creature except humans. Don't try to add that in there now because that's not what he said. This is what happens when you don't get any understanding at all and you just run with what uh, verses you think Paul is saying. I would not be surprised if there are Christian churches out there that are really eating humans because they think Paul said every creature and nothing to be refused. You in church, you hear somebody talking about, you know what, you know, you know Miss Betsy getting ready to pass away. I got, for, I got first dibs on her ankles. And then somebody else comes, you know, I got, I got first dibs on her elbows. Paul, Brother Paul said, oh, every creature is good, nothing to be refused. So we're not going to refuse Miss Betsy when she pass away. We're going to go ahead and eat that up too. Then here come Brother Charles, said, you know what, you know what, I, I just had me one of them African American rib cages last week. You know black people, when they're when they alive, they eat a lot of meat and uh, food with a lot of seasoning, so you, you don't really have to do too much work to the meat because it's already seasoned and tender. You just slap a little, a little bit of that A1 sauce on there and you're good. See, this is the Christian mindset right here. This is what happens when you don't understand doctrine and don't understand the Old Testament. Paul's not telling you you can go out and eat humans. He's not telling you you can go out and eat all the unclean food that you want to eat either. Now. Let's go back to 1 Timothy 4 and we're going to start at the first verse to get a clear understanding. Context. This is kryptonite to Christians. Context. And we're going to read all the way down to get an understanding on what this brother is talking about. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I'm letting you know that eating pork, shrimp, la crab, lobster, that's a seducing spirit and a doctrine of devils. Come on. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. What does it mean having their conscience seared with a hot iron? It's like taking an iron and you burn it on a shirt. You can't get that stain off. That's how people's minds is in the last days, with, filled with doctrine. No matter how many scriptures you bring out, people's mind is set in the way it is. That's, just the, that's the way it is. That's why he it says it's seared with a hot iron. You can't remove that doctrine out. Now, the Most High, Christ couldn't come, Christ couldn't come down and tell you that you're wrong because the doctrine is so sealed in your mind. That's what it means. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Keep this in mind. Abstain from meats that God created to be received with thanksgiving. Remember this as we go into the next verse. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received 
with thanksgiving. Every creature of God is referring to the previous verse that God created to be received with thanksgiving. This is what he's saying. Every creature that God created to be received with thanksgiving, not human beings, pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. That's not what he's saying. When he says, and, and nothing to be refused out of the creatures God created to be received with thanksgiving. Now we need to find out, okay, what creatures did the most high God create to be received with thanksgiving? It's as simple as that. Watch. Leviticus 11 verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. These are the meats that are created to be received with thanksgiving. These are the beasts. Watch. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven-footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. So the beast has to uh, part the hoof, has to be cloven-footed, and chew the cud. These are the requirements for it to be a meat that can be received, that God created to be received with thanksgiving. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. The camel was not created to be received with thanksgiving. He does not divide the hoof. So he's unclean. He didn't meet the three requirements to be a, a meat that the Most High created to be received with thanksgiving. And the cooney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. He did not, was not created to be received with thanksgiving. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. The nasty rabbit, he don't meet the requirements of an animal that the Most High created to be received with thanksgiving. And the swine, and the nasty swine, the nasty, despicable, detestable, grotesque swine, this nasty animal that people love to slap their lips on, Though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. This nasty animal does not chew the cud. I mean, he doesn't have, he doesn't uh, regurgitate his food, chew it again, and then digest it again. He doesn't have he doesn't have that ability. He, his digestive uh, amount of time is like four hours. He, it takes him like four hours to digest his food. This, this nasty animal is, he's not clean. He's not on the list of creatures that the Most High created to be received with thanksgiving. He's not on the list. He's not what Paul was talking about at all. This thing has no sweat glands. This, this thing is just a nasty, despicable animal. He's a bottom feeder of the earth. He's the garbage of the earth. He's, he's put on earth to clean up the nasty junk on the earth. This thing eats anything. The pig eats its own, this thing will eat its own babies. This thing is grotesque. And people are sitting there slapping their lips on it, thinking that the Most High said, now you're able to eat this nasty animal. You gotta be kidding me. He was not created to be received with thanksgiving. Get it out of your mind. Cut it out. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever had fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So the, require, the requirement for an animal that dwells in the sea or the rivers, he has to have fins and scales in order to meet the requirement of an animal that the Most High created to be received with thanksgiving. Fins and scales, this is the requirement. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters they shall be an abomination unto you so the animals in the waters that don't have fins and scales like catfish squid shrimp 
crab, lobster, oysters, sardines, octopus, all those animals that don't have fins on them and scales on them, the Most High says these are not created to be received with thanksgiving. They're not. They're not. Paul's not telling you, you can go ahead and eat these animals now. That's not what he was saying. He's not saying that. Now, everybody has to come to terms. There's, there's a lot of list, a lot of animals on this list that people love to eat. And I'll be the first one to tell you, the shrimp, out of all the other ones that are on this list, the shrimp was my thing. Put some lemon pepper on it, cook it up, put it in some uh, a salad. The shrimp was my thing. But once I understood how, uh, uh, how um, serious it is and of offense for the Most High or, or towards the Most High when you're eating these animals and how he feels about these abominable animals, I said it's not even nowhere near worth it to be eating some shrimp. The lake of fire is not worth eating shrimp. And yes, you will get the lake of fire for eating the abominable foods. Absolutely, you will get it. You will get it. I said, so I said, you know what? The shrimp, he gotta go. The swine, that nasty animal was not on the list. I don't know how people eat that nasty animal. I go to the store and I don't even like walking past that aisle. It's the, the meat is all pink, wrapped up in the pink uh, uh, foil. And this, I'm like this, I don't know how people eat this nasty animal. This thing is detestable and gross. But the shrimp, I had to give him up. I had to give it up. It's off the list. That the Most High says no. This is what it. This is what it means by someone who believes. If you really believe that the you really uh, you really believe the Bible and the Most High um, says not to eat it. If you really believe, you're gonna take heed to it because you're gonna understand that there is a punishment, and you're gonna actually believe that there's a punishment if you continue eating the things the Most High said not to eat. And we're gonna get into some of that right now. And then you're gonna have to decide which one is more important, holding on to your dear pork chops or uh, the lake of fire. Which one is more important? Wh wh which one, your soul salvation or a pork chop? First Timothy four, verse three, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So now we know what he means by every creature is good. Meaning every creature that was created to be received with thanksgiving according to Leviticus the 11th chapter. So now I want, now I want to show you why he just woke up one day and wrote this in his letter. Why did he write this in his letter? He, did he just wake up one day and say, you know what, I'm just gonna write about food. No, it was a reason why he wrote about this and he said at the end, it is sanctified by prayer. There's a reason behind it. And now that's what I'm gonna show you right now. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 25. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscious sake. So he's saying to the Corinthians, Whatever is sold in the shamble or the meat market, he says, eat. Don't ask no questions for conscience sake. And he's going to explain what he means by don't ask any questions about it. This is going to give you the overall scenario on what was going on on why he had to tell people to, um, to, to every creature of God is good. Stop tripping on, on, on eating the things that God created to be received with thanksgiving. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscious sake. So Paul is saying if somebody that's a non-believer in the gospel, and they say, come on over here, I want, I want you to partake in this feast. He says, go ahead and go and whatever they put in front of you, meaning whatsoever of the food that was created to be received with thanksgiving, he ain't saying if they put human fingers in front of you, eat it. Whatsoever that was created to be received with thanksgiving, according to Leviticus, the 11th chapter, he says, eat. Don't ask any questions about it. Watch. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols, but if someone says, 
this meat that was this meat, this lamb chops or this turkey, we sacrifice this to the God of Molech or to the God of Allah or to the God of any other pagan religion. He says, if they tell you that we did this, eat not for his sake that showed it and for conscious sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Don't touch that meat is what he's saying. Leave it alone. If he says, somebody telling you, yeah, we chopped this up to Buddha, don't eat it. That's what he's saying, for conscious sake. So that this is the deal that was going on, and you'll read about this all in Paul's letters, about meat being sacrificed to idols. Meat being sacrificed to other gods. That's what he was referring to. That's why he told him Timoth in, in, in Timothy uh, 4, that's why he said, every creature of God is good if it be received with thanksgiving, and it's sanctified by prayer. He's saying that that's, that's if that was the scenario when you go to the market. Don't be asking questions about, well, who'd you sacrifice this meat to? Because that was going on plentiful during that time. People were sacrificing the meat to other gods. So Paul is saying, just pray over the food and don't worry about it. Don't ask no questions. Just eat whatever God created to be received with thanksgiving. Just eat it. Don't be asking questions for your own consciousness sake. Because once you start asking questions, like where'd you, where'd you chop this food up at? And they start telling you stuff. You're not going to want to eat any food. You're not going to eat any food. And then there was people teaching, teaching the doctrine that you're not supposed to be eating no food because you don't know where they, you don't know where they sacrificed it to. That's why he told you that they would be forbidding to um, eat meats that the Most High created to be received with thanksgiving. They would be using that as a pretext that, that these meats were sacrificed to idols and to other gods to get to stir you away from eating meats that the Most High created to be received with thanksgiving. That's why Paul said, don't ask no questions. You'd be surprised what type of uh, sacrifices that even today, what these people are sacrificing these meats to. What gods they're sacrificing these meats to. Don't ask no questions. You gonna ask, just, just, just don't ask questions. Just eat the food. But if somebody tells you, yeah, we done chopped this up to uh, 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 Krishna. Don't deal with it. That's all it was saying in there. That's all Paul was saying. Had nothing to do with now you can go out and eat possums, squirrels, snakes, lizards, pork. He wasn't telling you that. That's not what he was telling you. Isaiah 65 verse 2. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. That's what the Most High calls the children of Israel. A rebellious people. He keeps stretching out his hand all the time to you rebellious people which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts, a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. We always making the most high hot. It's like spitting in his face. And he's gonna explain to you what one of the things is that makes him angry continually. That sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh, which eat swine's flesh. This is one of the things that make the Most High hot. Swine's flesh slapping your lips across pork chops, ham sandwiches, hog maw, all that nasty stuff. The Most High says this is what makes him hot when people do that because he did not create those animals to be received with thanksgiving at all. It's your own lust that makes you curious about eating those nasty animals. And broth of abominable things is in their vessels. And the abominable, nasty other animals is in your vessels, in the, bro in the broth. What they call down south, the, the, the gumbo pot. All types of abominable things in that broth. You gotta know people that's chopping up possums, raccoons, and why would you want to eat a nasty raccoon and a squirrel, snakes, and putting it inside of a pot? I'm gonna put this in a pot, brother. Trapping raccoons and saying, you know, I caught me about four or five raccoons, they going in the pot. The Most High said, man, I'm telling you, the Most High is hot when he sees this thing. Hot. Which say, stand by thyself. This is what they say. 
in the Christian church when you start telling them, brother, we can't eat shrimp, crab, and lobster. We can't eat those animals. The pork, you got to give it up. They say, stand by yourself. It's almost like they want to create another uh, uh, building for you and, and put you in that room by yourself. They say, you got to stand over there with that. I'm not giving up a pork chop. Smothered pork chops? Boy, you must be crazy. Me giving up the smothered? You must be crazy. I'm not giving that up. You got to go over there with that. So tell that to the Muslims. Come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. They say Paul's the one who told us we can eat this. I'm holier than thou, brother. You dealing with that law, that's old. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. That's what they say. I'm the Most High knows his people. He knows the hearts of you. I'm telling you, he knows it. That's how we know this Bible is accurate, on point. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I can do whatever I want. That's what they say. Watch. These are a smoke in my nose a fire that burneth all the day. The Most High says you are a smoke in his nose. Hot. It's like somebody that's so hot, smoke coming out their nose. That's how hot you make him when you say stuff like that. And you have no, cons you, don't, you don't even consider what you're doing. The Most High hates people like that. This is the judgment. He's gonna tell you what he's gonna do. This is the judgment for people who act like that and who are gonna take uh, the lust of eating these foods over the word of the Most High. He has a plan for you, absolutely. Watch. Isaiah 66, verse 15. For, behold, the Lord would come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So the Most High, or Christ, through the Spirit of the Most High, is going to return with anger now my question is what is he going to return with anger for you got over two point something billion christians on the earth you would think that that would be something good why is he coming back angry and rebuking with flames of fire a rebuke means a correction why what does he need to correct somebody for if all you need to do is believe he's coming back hot and rebuking with flames of fire watch for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. You know how Congress, the president, and other presidents in different countries, they plead with each other by sitting down and trying to have an agreement? The Most High is not doing that. The Most High is pleading with sword and with fire. That's how he's gonna say, you had your chance already to get it right. He pled already through the word. Now it's time to correct people with swords and flames of fire and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the Most High is going to have a lot of people put to death, not a few. It says many, many, understand that. Many people shall feel the wrath of the Most High. His sword gonna be bathed with human bodies. I'm telling you. And he's gonna tell you right now who are gonna be the people on his list. Top priority people on his list that he's gonna put his sword to. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves. Then what does it mean to sanctify themselves and purify themselves? Meaning you took it upon yourself to make something clean that the Most High didn't make clean. You're the one who sanctified yourself and said, I'm clean by doing this. I can do this. The Most High said you couldn't do it, but you're like, I'm going to cleanse myself. You're, gonna, you're on the list, watch. In the gardens behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh, eating what? Swine's flesh, eating what? Swine's flesh. The Most High is gonna kill people who are eating what? Swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouth shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. The Most High is going to kill all the ones eating the swine's flesh and the abominable broth. He's gonna kill you. The Most High is going to put you to death. This is a future prophecy. This has not happened. This has not happened. You misinterpreting Paul's uh, Timothy 4 verse 4, that's not gonna make this uh, verse null, null and void. This scripture and this prophecy will come to pass. Thus said the Most High. That's what he says. I didn't say it. It was thus said the Lord. He's coming back chopping heads off. He gonna come back as a thief in the night and see you with your lips slapped 
like, like, a, like, like a pit bull on a ham sandwich. He gonna catch you right at the drive through at McDonald's, getting ready to slap your lips on a sausage McMuffin. And it's coming right off. It's coming right off. He's not playing no games when it comes to this. He's not playing any games. This prophecy will be fulfilled. So this is what you have to take into consideration when you're digging in Paul's letters. Which one are you gonna believe? You gonna believe your misinterpretation or the Christian interpretation of Paul's writings? Or are you gonna believe this, thus say it the most high? Thus said the most, I'm, I'm, when I read this, I'm rolling. I'm putting shrimp away. I'm putting lobster away. I don't care what it is. I'm putting it away. If the most high said I couldn't eat no meat, I would have been a vegetarian. That's how serious it is. I'm not willing to sacrifice my soul to eat the luxury of some nasty swine, shrimp, crab, and lobster. It's not worth it to me at all. Is it worth it to you? That's the question. I can't make that decision for you. The Most High can't make that decision for you. That's something you gotta come to terms with. I'm just here to bring out the information and allow you to decide yourself. This ain't no, let me force people to convert. No, the Most High didn't send the prophets out for that. It's to give you the word to warn you and it's your choice on what you're gonna do with it. What you're gonna do with it. The Bible says a remnant shall return. A remnant shall be saved. The Most High is not looking for billions of people. That's not a remnant. He's not looking for billions of people. He's looking for quality over quantity. He wants people that's going to do it right versus a whole bunch of people that's just sitting there not doing anything he say, but talking about they believe and love the Most High. He'd rather have a team with two uh, LeBron James on it versus uh, 500 uh, Steve Kerr's. That's what he wants. He wants quality over quantity. That's what the Most High is dealing with. So now that you understand the correct interpretation of 1 Timothy 4 and 4, now it's your chance or your, uh, your time to decide what you're going to do with it. That's up to you. That's up to you. You're still going to eat pork? Fine. Just remember this Isaiah, that prophecy. He's coming back swinging heads off. Just remember that. And if that's what you want to deal with, and that's fine, then that, that's your... Uh, 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 choice, I have nothing else to say about it. I won't judge you, that's on you. That's on you, but these are videos are made for those that really want to learn, that really actually believe. This is a stumbling block the Most High put in there. He put this there on purpose. And eating these abominable foods, in my opinion, I'm going to tell you my opinion, this is going to be the t one of the top three reasons why people go to the Lake of Fire. That's my personal opinion. Top three reasons that people go into the lake of fire because they just won't give it up. They won't give it up. They won't give it up at all. So hopefully, you, hopefully you've been edified on this topic. And there's another verse that a Christian might pull out. It's Acts the 10th chapter. I wanna put this out real quick. Acts chapter 10, that has nothing to do with eating pork when Peter had a dream about the unclean beast. I'm gonna go into this topic on a future level. I mean, on a future um, video, I'll touch this topic. That had nothing to do with eating abominable. That's another verse that Christians twist, saying that Peter's dream now gave you the authority to go ahead and eat unclean foods. That had nothing to do with that. Those unclean foods in Acts the 10th chapter, I'm gonna just give you a little snippet. That was referring to the unclean um, Gentiles, and that was a pretext that the Most High used in order to bring the Gentiles into the fold. That's all those unclean beasts represented. Because the Gentiles have always been unclean and uncircumcised and eating these nasty animals. They've always been this way. So that was the pretext, and then when you go into Acts the 10th chapter, and to allowing Cornelius to come in. Had nothing to do with eating a rib sandwich. Let the uh, pimp and pastor fool you with, these, with, with those words. You're gonna have to pay for it. You're gonna be the one paying for it on that side of the judgment. So with that, I hope that you've been edified and you have a clear understanding. Watch it, rewind it, take notes, understand what's being brought out so you don't get caught up in the trap. Peter warned you, it's hard to be understood. And, you, and, and notice, the Most High made you work. In, or you have to work in order to get this understanding on 1 Timothy 4 and 4. Look how, you, you look how many verses you have to go through in order to understand the breakdown 
on what Paul is saying. You gotta dig all into the Old Testament. You gotta dig into the prophecies. You gotta go in context. That's why you're not supposed to be dabbling with Paul's writings until you have a clear understanding of everything prior to him. You need to leave it alone. The Most High has it where you have to work and the Christian church promotes laziness. They're just gonna have you read that one verse and then settle on it and create a doctrine out of it. It promotes laziness by saying all you gotta do is believe. I'm just gonna pray over it and I'm good. That's not what the Most High is dealing with. You can't stand in front of the Most High on Judgment Day with that excuse. You didn't even study, you, you think you didn't even study the word at all and you Most High just gonna say, come on in? You gotta be kidding me. Cut it out. I'm Cut it out, Christians, cut it out. It's nonsense. We're not, that's, yeah, those doctrines were used to enslave and keep the children of Israel enslaved. We're not listening to that nonsense no more. We can read the Bible now, the Most High's putting the Spirit back in us to interpret it and break it down correctly. And that's what we're doing. And now we gotta be the ones to teach the rest of the world because the Gentiles have not done their job at all. So the next lesson, we're gonna go into another stumbling block in Paul's letters to give you another understanding of what the brother's saying. And hopefully you've been edified on this subject. And with that, I'm gonna say shalom and peace and blessings to all the viewers and everyone out there coming back in these last days to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shalom.